Hi guys, so this is where you're going to turn on your subtitles for the video. And if you want to join my membership, you can get free access to all my PDFs. And I also like to show you just a few examples of what I sell in my merch shop. I appreciate your support and back to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're making this hammerhead shark. This guy's gray because that's what color the sharks are, but I'm going to make mine that's blue color just to be different. It's the exact same thickness as the gray. The gray is a craft smart light gray and it's craft smart value. And this is a craft smart value. It's just in the color aqua calls for a 5.5 so does the light so does the gray that you just saw calls for a 5.5 so I used a 5 because we are going to be building this in amigurumi so whatever yarn you're using whatever hook it calls for go down in hook size by just a little bit it doesn't have to be extreme you're gonna need some stitch markers and you're going to need some safety eyes. So the eyes I used are 14 millimeter safety eyes. And you can buy these. I don't think you can get this size at Michael's or Joann's. I'm not sure. I had to get these on Amazon because I couldn't find them anywhere else. So, um, But the 14 millimeter is the size that I used. And of course they're backs. Let's jump right into this. I'm using the green background so that hopefully you can see my my blue yarn pretty good. So we're going to start um, with the head. So the head is made into different pieces. Um, you're going to need white. This is my Craft Smart white. It's the same thickness, calls for the same hook. Um, and then in blue, so one white, one blue. So two pieces, we're going to end up sewing together, leaving a space to start the neck. Um, so we start this with a slip knot. Easy peasy. So make your slip knot any way that you make a slip knot. And you're going to chain 31. So that's my 31 chain. You're going to do one single crochet in each of the 30 stitches that you have working stitches all the way back up. So this is what you should have. So for the next eight rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch for eight rows. If you don't have a row counter by now, you should probably get one. They're so handy. So that's what I use. I do my eight rows. You can buy these at 98 cents at Walmart. Cheap enough. They're handy dandy. So chain one between rounds or not rounds, rows. So 30 stitches, eight rows. I will see you on the other side and we're gonna do the exact same thing with the white. So I'm just gonna put that pattern up on the screen, what, I'm, what we're doing now, for you to do the same thing with white. So when we come back, we should have both our, both our pieces. I will see you on the other side.
So, that's my white piece. I fastened off of this one with just a weaving tail. So, weave your piece in. Weave all your pieces in. Now these two ends are being sewn together, so it's not super duper important how far you go. Because nothing's going to happen to them. Okay, so now that you have your two ends and you, everything's all tucked away, I want you to put these two pieces together with your chain sides together and then your stitches that we finished off with, the solid, more solid stitches, put those together. We need to leave a 16 stitch gap to start building off of for the neck. So that's eight stitches per piece that we need to have open. So you need to find your middle stitch. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. So you're not gonna get quite in the middle exactly, but Get as close to the middle as you can. And then I need you to count back four stitches, two and four, and mark that. And then don't count this one, two and four, and mark that. So let's see, two, four, six, eight. Hmm. Let's count from the sides. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So my twelfth stitch there is marked. Two, four. Two, four, six, eight, ten. My twelfth stitch there is marked. So that leaves two, four, six, eight. So we're going to use the marked stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we've got to count in 12. So go ahead and do it on your other piece and I'll meet you right back here. So now that you've got your two pieces marked off, now keep in mind, we are going to be using this for stitches. So you're going to sew, don't sew in the, in the marker spots. You're going to sew up to the markers and up to the markers. You're going to leave this little gap so we can start the neck. So, because I have such a long sewing tail, when I sew, leaving the gap, I'm going to sew up to my last stitch and then I'm just going to kind of, keep in mind, we're turning this right side in after we're done sewing so you'll never see it. So I'm going to sew up to here. I'm going to just come along the, where's my needle? My sewing needle is on my, <laughs> I'm going to come along and I'm just going to go into these little pieces like I'm weaving. I'm just going to weave across the gap and then start sewing again here and go all the way around. I'm probably going to go this way. So on your corners, because we're turning this inside out before we stuff it, or right side in, or however you want to word that, on your corners to kind of keep your shark's head round and not square, kind of come in on a slant when you sew, and that'll round off his head. So you can do it on all four corners to keep his head a little more rounded off. We don't really want it too, too square. Even though it's a hammerhead shark, I don't want it too, too square. 
So that's all you're going to do is just sew your two pieces together and you can go as deep as you want because we're turning this right side in when we're done. So, And I just did a simple whip stitch. So I've sewed all the way around and I've, I'm up here where my markers are. I'm going to go through the last stitch before my markers. Um, I'm going to make a knot here. Nobody's ever going to see it. It's just going to kind of secure because I'm not going to be sewing across. And then this is where I just I weave again just go through the top pieces because you don't want it to go right through because we're going to be flipping this right side in so I'll just very politely weave until you get over to the other side then I'm gonna make a knot over here so I'm starting in the stitch right after the markers I make a knot just for security and I'm gonna continue to sew So once I get back around to where I started, I'm going to make another knot. Just secure it. And I'm going to weave. So we can take our markers out. So, um, this is where we turn it right side in. Which is another reason I wanted to tie those knots. It is a super duper small hole, so. But. We make it work. And we're going to put the eyes in before we stuff it. So, once you have it right side in. And all your corners poked out like they should be. where we put our eyes in so when I did the eyes originally they go in my sew job is not very desirable I don't sew well guys so find a spot you can jam that eye into preferably in the middle of the blue and or the gray and the white whatever color you're using preferably in the center and then we just got to try to match it on this side And 
and then we can stuff it. So just worry about the sides more so than the other part because we're going to be building off of it. You'll have plenty of time to stuff it. So just worry more about the sides. So don't worry so much about this part, just more so the rest of it, because we're going to be building off of this. So turn it around so that the white and the hole, the white's facing you, but the hole's facing away from you. We're going to reattach with our shark color. My shark color is blue. You're going to need a stitch marker to mark your stitch off. So I'm just going to reattach here on the side. You're going to have 20 stitches all together. So we did 8 stitches, 8 stitches, the 16. And then you've got the two extra sew spots that you can get into on either side, which makes 20 stitches. So that's the plan, Stan. So I'm going to go in into one of my sew spots to attach. So even though I've attached here, I'm going to still go put another stitch in there because I'm going to ignore that reattached spot when I come back around. Because it's small, I pull on it to make it nice and tight. So one single crochet in 20 stitches. That's 19, and then my sew spot makes 20. So this is going to be our starting marker. This here is where I reattach. So that gets pulled tight, and that this is going to get weaved in later. So I'm not. I'm going to ignore this attached spot, and I go right into this next stitch. You're doing 20 or you're doing 20 stitches for six rows. So you're just doing one single crochet in each stitch for six rows. This one counts as number 1, the first row. So row number 2 is just following your stitches at this point. So this is why I want you to put a marker in to mark off your first stitch. It's always going to be by the tail anyway, but because we're working a spiral, it might kind of start meandering back this way. It's only six rows, so it's not going to meander much. And this is when you're going to have plenty of time to stuff this part. So stuff as you go for your six rows, and I will see you on the other side. So, that's my six rows. You're going to want to stuff this because you're still stuffing probably part of the head like I am. So just make sure you're stuffing it pretty good.
All right, so this straggler can go away. I'm gonna make the wee tiniest of knots. Just for my own security purposes. So when I pull, it kind of sucks that knot down inside there. You can't feel it, you can't see it. Just for my own peace of mind. So, once your um, shark is done. So, uh, there's one thing I didn't put on the bottom of my shark. I didn't put a mouth. And I think I will for this one because I meant to do it on that one. I just never did before I decided to do the video. But put a cute little smiley mouth on him. So your next round. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That is four single crochets. And then the increase is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next row is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches. That's number one number two and three and then your increase is two single crochets in the same space and repeat so your next row is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches So we're at the part of the project where we take our stitch marker out and we forget we it even existed. We have 30 stitches. We're going to move this guy a couple of doors down. So he's about on the side. Now yours may not be in the same spot as mine, but make sure that he's kind of on the side so it may or may not be even but you have 30 stitches so count out 15 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 15 should be right across and you're gonna mark that you should have 15 stitches up here 2 4 6 8 10 12 counting this one is 15 14 15 we are increasing here, but not here. And that's why I needed you to move your marker. So make sure he's on the side, make sure he's on the side. So we're only doing this weirdness one time and one time only. So you can mark this stitch if you want. That will be your first stitch. Cause you can just keep this marker spot if you want to it's not going to make a difference on your numbers are still all going to be the same so number one you're going to count 15 single crochets the marker is number one
So the marker is my 15th stitch. And now I'm going to do two single crochet increase as many times as it takes to get me back to this marker. So two single crochet increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then an increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat to get to the marker. This is my fifth time, two single crochets, and then my increase. So I did it five times, which is what the PDF says as well. So we're only doing this, this once. We're not until we decrease. Actually, I think I decrease normally from what I can remember. So we're only doing this one time. You should have 35 stitches. This marker here can come out because we're not doing this again. We're going to keep our, we're going to keep this marker now as our new marker spot. So I just kind of needed the shark to kind of hump up here a little little tiny bit but stay flat on the bottom so that's why we just did that funky Cole Medina so for the next 14 rows you're gonna put one single crochet in each of these 35 stitches and I will see you on the other side So that is my 14 rows, so this is what it should look like. I already started stuffing mine. So we're going to do some decreasing. I'm going to do five single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's five single crochets. And then my decreases are going to be invisible. Oh, I might have a knot in there. My decreases are going to be invisible, which means I'm going to do them in the front loops, but I'm not going to do them like a regular decreases, going into the full stitch, pulling up a loop, going into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, and then pulling through all three. An invisible decrease is going through the front loop only, not yarning over front loop and then you pop around to the next front loop then you yarn over pull through those two loops and finish the stitch so that's an invisible one which means you won't get that gapping that you normally get with a regular decrease so five single crochet decrease this will bring you down to 30 stitches to hold. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 25 stitches and then I want you to follow it up with one single crochet in each stitch I have all the, that on my pause screen. So number one, that is four single crochet and then my decrease and repeat.
Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 20 stitches and then I want you to follow it up with one single crochet in each of those 20 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So your last decrease row is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And then I want you to do six rows of one single crochet in what should be 15 stitches. That's number one. That's two single crochets and then a decrease. So I'm going to put all this up on my pause screen. Make sure you're stuffing as you go because we're going to be closing it off after we come back so I will see you on the other side so this is what you should have this is the end of our shark body. This here may seem long to you, but it's the way we sew on our tail fins. We needed the extra space, so ultimately it ends up looking like that. So it ends up lo looking actually short, quite short. In case you're wondering, So here we can fasten off. We're just going to cinch this end shut. So you just need a cinching tail. So we're going to stench, cinch, stench. <laughs> we're going to cinch by going through the front loop and out the front loop, just like that, all the way around. You can skip one if you want, but only use the front loops. And just pull close that up. So I like to just pop across the hole and make a knot. Keep in mind some fins are getting sewed to the end of this so it doesn't really matter what this looks like the way we're going to sew the fins on. So mine's a little puckery because I didn't put enough stuffing in it but the fins literally go over this part so you'll never see the end of this. So once you're satisfied, you can just weave. So this will be the end of chapter one. When we come back, we're going to do, uh, oh, I put a face on my guy before I end this chapter. I just put a little smiley smile on him. Um, we can probably squeeze that in before I end the chapter, but this chapter will be, um, I'm just going to use blue, the color of the shark. Um, the, um, chapter two is going to be probably fairly short. Um, anyway, I went in through the blue and then up wherever I wanted it. So I just came in through the head actually. And wherever you want your mouth. And then I popped across. Trying to do it evenly. Mm. I need to move over one. 
It's because I'm not sure I want it that long. So when I go into where I want, I'm going to pop out right above it to make this the little side things for the smile. Then I'm going to go down here and pop out over here to make the little side smiley part. And then when I go in through here, I'm going to pop out the top with in the same hole as where I went in. So once you pop out the same hole, you can just tie this in a double knot. Just don't pull so tight that this pulls. Cut it off, leaving some nubbies. Don't cut it down to the knot too bad. And then just poke it down. And there. Poke too hard. So when we come back in, um, so when we come back in chapter two, we're going to do the underbelly and the, uh, all the fins. And, um, that will include the pectoral fins, the dorsal fin, the tail, well, these are the tail fins, but these are also back tail fins. The only fin I didn't do was the anal fin that goes here. Um, because I thought it was stupid, so. <laughs> but they're about the size of this, so if you actually wanted to put an anal fin here, um, you can just make three of these guys and then sew it, sew it to here. But we're going to do the tail fins and everything else, the white belly, and then we're going to be done. So I will see you in chapter two. Hi guys, welcome back to chapter two. So we're going to start with the white belly and then, well, no, we're going to make all the fins first. We'll make all the fins first and then we'll do the white belly and then we'll just kind of sew everything together. So that's going to be what's going to happen. So let's start with the tail fins. Let me get my blue. We're going to make a magic ring of four single crochets. It's going to start small because I wanted a point on it, right? Um, if you don't know how to make a magic ring or you're not comfortable with that, just do a chain two and put everything into the first chain. It'll look this, it'll be the same. But a magic ring that I do is I take it and hold it like this. I'll wrap it around my two fingers, across my ring finger and grab it with my pinky. And then I go up underneath here. I grab this guy, I flip and turn, and then I pick up what's over my ring finger and I pull it through there. So you do a magic ring and a chain one in one smooth operation. So put four single crochets in there. So we're gonna do one single crochet in each of these four stitches first one's always a pleasure to get into. So if you, you're not familiar with where your stitches are, I would use a stitch marker here. Me, I'm just going to do four single crochets because I am aware and I know it can be so difficult to see your stitches. So just to be safe, I would use the stitch marker. So I'll flip this around. You probably have to close your, pull your middle again. So I just stick my, it on the end of my hook and I pull my middle just to make sure it's nice and closed. And then I begin again. So the stitch we're currently in isn't kind of elongated, so you gotta make sure you pop way over here to start your next stitch. 
We're going to do one single crochet increase. So pop way over to this stitch. For those that used a stitch marker, you probably already know where it is. That's one single crochet and an increase. So we're only going to be going up by twos with this because we're only going to do each increase two times. One single crochet and an increase. So again, I just like to use my hook to make it shaped. It's easier to hold. Your next increase is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to eight stitches. number one and that's number two and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat so you should have eight stitches I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these eight stitches Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to ten stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Now I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 10 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 12 stitches. I am just going to tuck my tail down in there because it gets super annoying. That's number one. That is four single crochets and then your increase. And repeat. Next rounds can be five single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 14 stitches. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 16 stitches.
next round is going to be, or your last increase round will be seven single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 18 stitches. So, this is what you should have for the next two rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So, this is what you should have. Um, I did put a little bit of stuffing in mine, but not a whole, whole lot. So you can fasten off. This stays open. So you can have two sewing tails if you want for this. These two ultimately get halfway sewn together. I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. Go ahead and make your second piece and I will meet you right back here. So, I have my second one done. I want you to go in from this direction and pull this through. Um, it gives a better look and it's better for when you start sewing, in my opinion. I mean, you don't have to do it. I'm not, I'm just making a suggestion. So one of my tails was longer than the other because one I'm gonna use to sew part of this together and the other one's gonna be um, using it to sew to the shark. So we can do the two smaller back fins. They're nice and quick. So you're going to do a magic ring of four single crochets. So your first round you're going to do one single crochet and an increase. So I would definitely use a marker here. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat one more time. One single crochet and then your last stitch, just make sure you're getting under two pieces. So, pull your middle closed. This one's difficult. It was difficult for me to pull my middle closed for some reason. Flip it around. So you should have six stitches. I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So don't go back into this spot. Make sure you're going over to your next stitch. I'm just going to count to six. So 
also your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. I'm going to repeat that one more time. And that's it. <laughs> you can fasten off. So this one I chose to whip stitch such. So you're going to need a decent tail. And again, I like to go in and pull it through, especially if I'm going to be whip stitching it. So I'm basically only stuffing it with the my straggler. So I'll just make the, sure your thingamabobber is on the side. And there we have it. So go ahead and make your other one. I'll put the pattern on the screen. I'll see you right back here in probably a half a second because it's so small. So now we make the pectoral fins. Just make sure you're not getting these all mixed up because they can tend to look alike. You're going to start with a magic ring of four single crochets. Your next rounds can be one single crochet in each stitch, so it's just four stitches. Cut this straggler off a little bit because it's probably going to drive me nuts. So, your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So, again, this is elongated, so make sure you pop over here. We're just doing this twice, so that's one single crochet and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Repeat one more time. One single crochet, two single crochet. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. We're just doing everything twice, so I'm not really going to use my marker, but if you're not familiar with where your stitches are, then I would suggest using a marker. That's two single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space, and repeat. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring up to ten stitches. Your marker always counts as number one. Just 
Just remember you're doing everything twice if you're not using a stitch marker. So you should have 10 stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 10 stitches. round is going to be four single crochets in an increase. Stitch markers number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat one more time. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. Stitch markers number one. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat one more time. So this gives you 14 stitches. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 16 stitches. Stitch markers number one. That's six single crochets and then your increase. Repeat one more time. Your next increase is going to be seven single crochets in an increase. And this will bring it up to 18 stitches. Next round is going to be eight single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 20 stitches. Your next round is going to be nine single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 22 stitches. Your last round is going to be, well, your last increase round will be 10 single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 24 stitches. And then I want you to follow it up with a one single crochet in each stitch row. And then that'll be the end of it. That's number one.
that is 10 single crochets and then my increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat So that's what it should look like. I stuffed these two a little bit, just a little bit. So you can fasten off. The sewing tail. I'll put the pattern on the screen and you can make pectoral fin number two. Alrighty, so we do a dorsal fin, we're only doing one because it's just, it's the one on the top. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. A little bit easier on the fingers this time. So, from the very beginning, we have to shape this so that it kind of angles back. So dorsal fin will angle back like this, and we're going to build it for it to just do it automatically, and so we don't have to worry about constantly fixing it if it's on display or something. So, your first round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your last three stitches are going to have two half doubles and an increase. So yarn over, go into your stitch, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through all three, that's half double. So that's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two half doubles in the same space. So you can flip this around, pull your middle closed, flip this around. And that's how we're going to proceed. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase to start. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your last three stitches is going to be or four stitches <laughs> are going to be three sing three half doubles and an increase. So that's my three half doubles and then my increase of two half doubles in the same space. You should have ten stitches. Next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase and then four half doubles and an increase. So that's number one. That's four single crochets and then your increase. And then we're gonna do four half doubles and an increase. So 
So you should have 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase, and then five half doubles and an increase. That's number one. That's five single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space, and now five half double crochets and an increase. You should have 16 stitches at the end of this row. 16, or 16, <laughs> 16 stitches at the end of the row. You're going to do six single crochets and an increase. And now six half doubles and an increase. So at the end of this row, you should have 18 stitches. We're going to do seven single crochets in an increase, and then seven half doubles in an increase. So, you should have 18 stitches, like I said. For the next four rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So, by doing everything now a single crochet, it'll really make this turn. So that's what you should have, and then it'll just automatically swing back like that. So you can fasten off with a sewing tail. So I sewed this on open when I sewed it on, but I also put a little bit of stuffing in that too. So we have all of our fins done. This is from a half a roll. That's how much I have from a half a seven ounce roll. So, <coughs> it'll probably only take to build it. I mean, not even a half a seven ounce roll. So, that's 3.5, less than 3.5 ounces. Because this, well, this was about 3.5 ounces. I took the seven ounce ball and I rolled it into two cakes because that's what you can do. Each cake, obviously, is three and a half ounces. So it's even less than three and a half ounces to build this guy. So, the last thing we have to do is our white belly. So, get some white. And we're going to start this off with a slip knot chain five, four single crochets.
chain one, turn your work. One single crochet in each of those four stitches. Hard to hold when it's this small. I have such fat fingers though. Chain one, turn your work. Easy peasy so far, huh? So, PDF users, you'll see the a lot of this is written with brackets. Brackets in my videos mean a few things. A special sequence, same space, or the counts. This obviously means the same space. It's their increases. So you're going to increase the first stitch. So put two single crochets in there. Then you're going to do two single crochets, one in each. And then you're going to get to this last stitch and put two single crochets in there. Chain one, turn your work. And now I just want you to do six single crochets, one in each stitch. We're building from the tail up, in case you're wondering. Not that it makes a difference, but... So from here, we're going to only increase the middle stitch. So PDF users, you'll see the brackets only for the middle stitch. So we're going to do two single crochets. And anyone else that's wondering what I'm talking about, I have. if you hit that join button, you can join my channel membership for $4.99 a month and you will get free PDFs for everything, just about everything I do. Tapestry crochets I don't because I don't make the graph gans, but just about everything that I do, you will get the free PDF for. So, two single crochets, your next stitch will get the increase. And then you're gonna do three single crochets to finish the row. Chain one, turn your work. Your next round is going to be three single crochets, an increase, and three single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. Your next round is going to be four single crochets, an increase, and then three single crochets to finish the row. Chain one, turn your work. You should have nine stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to do four single crochets, your next stitch gets the increase, and then four single crochets to finish the row. Now you're going to do five single crochets. Then your increase and four single crochets to finish the row. So now I just want you to do 11 single crochets. So your next round is going to be five single crochets, then your increase, and five single crochets.
six single crochets then your increase and five single crochets to finish the row and now I just want you to do 13 single crochets So this is what you should have so far. So one more increase row. We're going to do six single crochets. The next stitch is the increase stitch. So two single crochets in there. And then six single crochets to finish the row. So, for the next 11 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So, this is my 11 rows but we're going to measure our gauges because um, I st we still have to build some on here but at this point I want to say I'm a loose crocheter let me get this off my finger I am a loose crocheter um, so if we measure our gauge now you will know whether you're tighter than me or looser than me or the same as me because this literally goes from the tail all the way up to here and we want it to be the size that you need it for your shark's body I don't know how you crochet I don't know how you stuffed it so I mean this is kind of hit or miss so I just thought that I would do my gauge to give you an idea of what I can do in four inches so I'll give you an idea 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 rows in 4 inches of single crochet. So, um, we don't really need to measure this, this amount of stitches, I don't think, because it, it doesn't really matter. It's all the way across, actually. This is 4 inches wide, so 11, <laughs> 11 single crochets, or 14 single crochets in 4 inches, and then 14 rows in 4 inches. So that's my gauge, which is loose. Well, I've been told it's loose. Um, so if you're shorter than that, you might want to put a couple more rows on. Like if you're sitting at 4 inches gives you 12 rows, you're going to have to do two more rows to get 14. So... Um, I would just I would just suggest just so that you don't have to take anything off the end um, or the end like if you have to pull out a couple of rows at the top it it's not going to be a huge big deal to make it all line up I'm just trying to save you the trouble at this point so um, do your measurements and then I'll meet you right back here to start doing our decreases all righty so, chain one, turn your work. PDF users, you're going to see it written as SC2 TOG. That's just a decrease. We say single crochet two together. That's what SC2 TOG means. So, you're going to decrease the first two. Then you're going to do ten single crochets across and decrease the last two.
That's my 10th stitch. And then I'm going to decrease these last two. Chain 1, turn your work. So we do it again. Decrease the first two. We're going to do eight single crochets. That's my eight. And then I'm going to decrease these last two stitches. Chain one, turn your work. So now I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 10 stitches. So now we're only going to decrease the middle. So let's do four single crochets. That's my four single crochets and then decrease here and then four single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. So now you're going to do four single crochets. You're going to decrease here and do three single crochets to finish the row. For the next six rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these eight stitches and I will see you on the other side. So this is my sixth row. And before I fasten off, I just want to put it on my shark to make sure that it's going to be okay. So, it should be sewn, obviously, into the white, and it should go right down to your tail. So, if you, if yours is too long, then just pull out a row or whatever here. But, part of your fin is probably going to go over, because the my bottom fin goes over mine a little bit, but that's okay. So if yours fits, then you can fasten off with a super duper long sewing tail. So the first thing we're going to sew on is this belly. So you can put your straggler somewhere. Super duper important to pin this into place. Just so you don't get it twisted which mine's already twisted and I haven't even started yet.
So now that your belly is sewn on, let's do the tail. So I'm gonna grab my shorter my shorter piece to put the tails together. So if you did my shark with me, you already know what I'm going to do. Let me zoom in a bit here for you. So the tail, I do stuff these. So the tail goes on like this. So this little part I'm holding with my thumb gets sewn together and then the rest of it gets sewn on like mattress stitch, whip stitch, whatever you want to do. But I did put a little stuffing in each of them. Like a little, little bit. I definitely tried to stay away from the, the tip because you just kind of want it to do its own thing. And most of the reason for this is just so it doesn't get floppy. So it stays kind of standing upright. So. You just have to figure out what ends you're putting together. And then just put them together. So I'm just going to match up my, my ties. So I sew that part up. And then my last stitch, I'm going to make a knot. And then just kind of be done with this. So I'm just weaving this little, this little piece. But you can put your tail on any way that you want. certainly not easy to do and it's not easy to do on camera so I just push it right down like that and then I start sewing so like I said you can do whatever stitch you want um, I'm gonna do a mattress stitch just because I think it looks better But it's kind of at this angle that you kind of got to pull as you go type mattress stitch because it is at a very weird angle. And you just got to make sure that everything is going to be straight. And then we just sew it on like that. So I'm going to do mine off camera because it's going to be way easier. And I will meet you right back here. So this is my tail. So I did finish stuffing it once that was partially sewn around. I finished stuffing this part. And this one's actually on straight, <laughs> unlike my other one. Anyway, I met up like I do with everything. I meet up in the same hole with both my pieces and I'm going to tie a tight double knot and poke it down. Oh, drop my scissors. 
So if anything happens, my tail is tied together on the inside. And there we have our shark fin. So uh, my sewing is probably not very desirable because I don't sew very well, but that's that. So hopefully you sold your belly on right because these guys and you could probably use the white part to put your tail fins those little back tail fins on So they look fairly fairly close. <laughs> They're not. They're not, but they look it. I mean when you flip it over, I guess they don't well I guess and they do. I look in the camera. It's hard to kinda of tell unless I turn it over, but so um I guess the dorsal fin and then the pectoral fins. I stuff these. These are the pectoral fins. These are his hands, essentially. So I didn't stuff the tippy top. I guess I can zoom back out. So I just stuffed <coughs> just about as much as I did the other tail. A little bit. So you can decide whether you want these sewn on open or closed. And if you want it closed, you're going to have to move this guy over to the side. But mine, mine's going to be open. I just found it looked better. This yarn is just too thick for a whip stitch closed. These will go into the white. It'll go into the white. Oh, sorry. But I I suppose it's your choice how to sew these on. But it'll sit back that far. So it's completely up to you. I suppose, but it has to be back. These are like his shoulders, this hump. So it's got to be back at least that far. And then the dorsal fin sits about there. So if that gives you any indication. So anyway, I also stuffed the dorsal fin and sewed it on open. So I'm going to leave you to it now that you have a layout of, you know, so this has to be back to his just past where his neck is and then this dorsal fin kind of starts halfway through his pectoral and doesn't quite reach the tail fin back here or the tail fin up here so go ahead and sew all your stuff on and I will see you on the other side So that is it. I've got my, I forgot to mention this is supposed to be tilted backwards, but I think you probably already know that. So as far as my 
side fins go because I didn't stuff the tops. I just kind of angled them that way. Because generally that's the way they're angled to propel through water. So there we have it. And I already have my little mouth on there. So there is the hammerhead shark. Now I just got to try to get a decent picture of it for the thumbnail. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.